Hello and welcome to another session of the Product Management View webinar series. Before our speaker starts today, I've got just a few housekeeping details that I'd like to share with our listeners. All listeners today have a muted line, and if you have a question to our speaker about his presentation or any issues with how you're viewing the presentation itself, please go to the question and answer section on the webinar control panel at the right side of your screen. All questions will be held until the end and addressed by the speaker during the Q&A session. Again, I would like to formally welcome you once more to the Product Management View webinar series. I'm Chelsea Woodhead from Rima Technology Solutions, one of the sponsors of this webinar series, and I'll be your moderator. It is my pleasure to introduce Tom Grant, who will be giving the presentation, The Tools You Use, The People You Persuade, during today's webinar. As a senior analyst, Tom helps technology product management and marketing professionals succeed and technology companies better use their product management resources. Product management varies widely from company to company, product roadmaps, requirements collection, internal and partner product training, competitive analysis, feature planning, early demos, productization, release management, you name it. Therefore, Tom's job is to help product managers and IT companies hone those critical skills and help the company decide which areas the product management organization needs to emphasize. Tom also has broad experience in different segments of the technology industry, such as content management, collaboration, Web 2.0, databases, and portals. And with no further ado, I'm going to hand presenter status over to Tom. And take it away, Tom. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, hang on a second. Hope everyone can see my screen all right. So thanks to everyone here for attending. Um, um, today, really what I want to focus on is the toolkit for product management. Uh, this is, I think, an interesting topic on, on several levels. Uh, we'll kind of talk a little bit about where we are today and this kind of the state of the, uh, of the market and at the end of the presentation talk about what sort of practical next steps you might make in order to improve the tools that you depend on as a product manager. So here's the kind of the thesis statement for today that, you know, we, there's a great amount of irony in the fact that product managers who work for companies who are in the business of convincing their customers to purchase and implement better information management tools are themselves, by and large, using tools that are roughly in the stone age of, tech, of technology that's available. That's the bad news. The good news is that that situation is slowly changing, and there's a lot that we can learn from innovative companies on how to better use tools to support product management, and product management then, in turn, supports the larger company effort to bring to market cutting-edge products that, that people really want to buy. So I'm going to take us through three steps here in the discussion. First of all, you know, kind of a, a, a dive into where we are specifically on, on this question of product management tool support, uh, speculate a little bit about how we got here uh, as an industry into this somewhat odd situation. And then, as I mentioned earlier, last of all, go into what you can do next in order to improve your product management toolkit. All right, so where are we? Uh, I, you know, I have kind of a, uh, I've been struggling for a long time and kind of coming up with a vision of you know, some of the um, foibles of the technology industry that you know, often there's a struggle that happens in trying to design products bring them to market, market them successfully, basically plug the technology into a need, uh, and then convert that into revenue for the company in turn. So I finally hit on what I wanted to use as a metaphor for that, and here it is. Uh, if you recall, if you're a Simpsons fan, uh, in the first couple of seasons or so, there was a, a really great episode where Homer discovers his long-lost brother, who's voiced by Danny DeVito, and uh, his brother is a highly successful businessman, unlike Homer, and uh, his brother owns a car company. And be, in kind of the elation of having met his his brother, he didn't know existed, um, you know this uh, this other hidden Simpson uh, lets Homer design.